edition of Radio Biafra live presentation on this very day, the last day of the second month of the year 2020 that Elohim Chukukika Biama has made with the time now standing at precisely 10 minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, I welcome each and every one of you listening. I welcome those who have joined us from the far-flung reaches of this very planet, regardless of where you are. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. We are under very serious and sustained attack this very evening. Some of you who are listening via Radio Biafra Facebook platform, you will notice that some of you are being removed unceremoniously. Our enemies are not relenting. Our enemies are not backing down. And as they continue to do all they can, To frustrate this very divine project, we are renewed in our faith, our strength goes from bound to bound, leap upon leap, because we are relentless, we are resolute, we are determined, it does not matter. What the enemies do, it doesn't matter what they are likely to do tomorrow. One thing remains very constant. This very family, this very IPOB, this very mission to restore upon this very earth, the wish of heaven must be accomplished in our time. My name is Namdi Khan. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra and by the very special grace of the Almighty in heaven, Chukwokika Biama Purimi Henine. Irreducible, indivisible, only one God, the creator of everything that we see around us. Only by his grace shall we continue to serve the wonderful people of Biafra. As I welcome you, I will encourage you to welcome those who are around you. I will also ask you to bring your pen and your paper handy because this is the very greatest university on the face of this very earth. We propagate the gospel of truth, the gospel of redemption, what this very generation is at the threshold of accomplishing has never been done before and after we are gone it can never ever be attempted because those we are fighting or should i say those who are fighting against us have limitless resources they are buoyed by their criminal mindedness 
They are encouraged by their terrorist tendencies. They are infused by the support they are getting from Britain. But I sit here this very evening behind this very microphone, this very platform ordained by heaven to proclaim that no matter what they accomplish, no matter their plans, regardless of their conspiracies, regardless of everything within their powers they intend to do to stop this very project, they can never, ever, ever succeed because IPOB is here. Because IPOB is here, Biafra is also here. And in our time, and the will of heaven shall prevail upon this very earth. That is why this evening I will pray a very common prayer to convey this very fact to convey the inescapable reality that there is only one God in heaven, not two, not three, not four. Therefore, I will say the prayer of Yeshua. I will say the prayer of those who have come before us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this very day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever and ever we pray. He say, he say, he say, I say this very prayer this evening for one very simple reason. To underline the fact that there is only one God in heaven, not two, not three, not four. Everything that is born of a woman will bow before God in heaven. And why have I chosen this as an opening remark this very evening? Is to drive home the very fact that we anchor all we do on the grace and the mercy of God in heaven. Elohim Without whom we cannot accomplish anything. That is why we pray to him and to him alone as Yeshua did in times gone by. Therefore, this very evening we shall preach the gospel of redemption, the gospel of restoration, the gospel of renewal, the gospel of hope, the gospel of liberation, that those who are privileged to listen might be set free from the damnable bondage of the zoological republic created by Britain and sustained by neocolonialists, those who seek to gain from the suffering of the masses. That is why Biafra will come and with it freedom for everybody. I say freedom for everybody, not just for the very few, but for all. This very evening, if you do not have your pen and paper handy, if you are not ready to receive this very gospel, then there is something fundamentally wrong with you. Because a lot is wrong with Nigeria. A lot is wrong with the zoo. People are being slaughtered like flies all over the place. Impunity upon impunity. Iniquity upon iniquity. Damnation upon damnation. Terrorism upon terrorism. The likes that this very generation has never seen or heard before. Evil is happening on a daily basis. They have constrained themselves with lies that they can no longer see the truth, but we must preach it. And very hastily, I must say, we go and we start with the state this very evening, the installation of a caliphate stooge, the imposition of a full and a servant, that very sadly, some of you, because of money, because of what you can gain from any incoming administration, you have refused to stand up to speak the truth concerning the travesty of justice, concerning the evil that is happening in Imo State, which once again next week, the Supreme Court of the Zoo will have an opportunity to revisit. And they must revisit it. 
what we are trying to say this evening is that they only have only one verdict to come to. We have analyzed, we have distilled, we have extrapolated all the figures we have in every sensible way dissected the judgment, should I say, the skewed judgment of the zoo in relation to Imo State gubernatorial elections. There is only one way out for them. I do not want those people with their horse wig who will be sitting sometime next week to determine what becomes of Imo State to think that the judgment they obtained in relation to Bielsa applies in the case of Imo State. It is very clear. What they are looking for is not any other part of Biafra land. What they wish to occupy is over. For very spiritual reasons that some of you who are blind in spirit cannot see. The caliphate needs over very much. They believe that if they can strangulate us from over, we will collapse in all other areas. Bayelsa is not important to them. What they are looking for is a mistake. I do not want people to be misled or led astray by the judgment that obtained in the Bielsa case and use that to justify what happened in Imo State. Hope Zadema is a stooge of the Fulani. He is a caliphate servant like his predecessor, should I say, the one that left there a while ago, Rocha Sokorocha, as some of you know. We cannot allow whatever their plan may be regarding Imo states to stand. So we are warning everybody listening. We are warning the whole world. I do not know who we are making head your is and uh, frankly speaking, I do not care. What we care about is the welfare of our people and what happens in Imo state affects everybody. Once you allow a Fulani stooge to be planted in Imo state, the same thing that happened to the Yorubas during the time of Afonja will happen to us. Hope Uzodima cannot be there. That we are assuring the world. Let those who do not understand where we are going be very clear about this. That what happened in Mimo State cannot be allowed to stand. In order to avert disaster and chaos, the Supreme Court of Nigeria must do the needful. The least they can do, I'm offering them a way out this very evening, is to call for fresh elections in Imo State. That is the only thing, that is the only sensible solution. There is no other justifiable reason to throw out figures that are not supported by those who are responsible for ensuring that elections are conducted in that very place, in this case, INEC, and the police for that matter. The figures upon which the Supreme Court of Nigeria is basing the askewed judgment or trying to seek the justification of the imposition of Hopu Zodema on the people of Imo State cannot be sustained. It is unsustainable in law. It is unsustainable in common sense. It is unsustainable before heaven. It is unsustainable before man on this very earth. Therefore, we reiterate very, very clearly and unambiguously that justice must be served. There is no need for them to seek to hide behind the fact that it is the Supreme Court of Nigeria. We cannot revisit past cases. That is absolute nonsense. You cannot base a judgment on lies and deceit. If they attempt, I repeat, if they attempt to justify the imposition of the caliphate servant, the man they have planted in Imo State to deliver the Islamization and the Fulanization of Biafra land, if they allow or seek to allow Hopo Zodema to remain in power, anything they see they will take. We are warning the whole world. We are a peaceful movement but one thing we cannot tolerate is for a bunch of people in Sokoto, in Kanu, in Katsina, and in Abuja to determine what happens in Biafra land. It cannot happen. 
Hope Ozodema cannot remain there because the people did not vote for him. The people do not like him. As a matter of fact, no APC candidate was voted even to the House of Assembly. Forget the fact that they're now cross capping to APC due to greed and hunger. Tomorrow they will come out and tell us that they're leaders. You can see the way they are behaving. There are some people on social media with fake Igbo names, with fake Igbo names, trying to shore up support on social media platforms for Hopus Odemma. It is not going to work. We know who you are, all of you, from top to bottom. Nobody voted for Hopus Odemma to be in Douglas House, and he cannot be there. If they attempt, any attempt, all the judges sitting on the case come next week Tuesday. Any attempt to justify the imposition of hope or the man, I will dissect the judges one after the other. No stone will be left unturned. So we are warning them that they may know before we commence our work. And as a reminder to those who may seek to use the Bielsa president to apply to Imo State, in Imo State, the facts are very clear. The Supreme Court of Nigeria lied when they inflated the number of registered and certified voters in Imo State. The Supreme Court of Nigeria lied. And I will spend the rest of my life ensuring that not one single judge from Nigeria travels abroad anymore. Should this travesty be allowed to stand, I will make it a point of duty. This very noble family, this very IPOB, we would relentlessly pursue each and every single judge that will sit in judgment or seek to sustain this falsehood and evil. There is no way the Supreme Court of Nigeria can know the number of people that voted. The only agency, the only authority charged with making sure that the accurate number of people that voted in an election is reflected in every legal process or proceeding is INEC. And INEC have come out to say, as flawed as they are, as corrupt as they are, they have come out to say that the number of accredited voters being quoted by the Supreme Court of Nigeria did not come from them. The only thing I want the Supreme Court to consider is, where did you get your figures from? From where did you get those figures upon which you based your justification of the return of Hopos or the Matrimo State? From where did you get it? You are not INEC officers. You are not the police. You are not there in the polling stations. You do not know. Forget the fact that APC Yondo Shomole have gone and concocted and printed ballot boxes and now have forced you to try and admit those as evidence. They cannot be. The only people allowed by law in Nigeria to tell us how many people that actually voted in the zoo is INEC. And INEC have come out repeatedly to say that the figures being touted by the Supreme Court is null and void because they are false. In other words, the Supreme Court of Nigeria is involved in fraud. They are involved in electoral banditry. They are involved in ballot box kidnapping. The Supreme Court of Nigeria in seeking to spread Islam through the judiciary is seeking to, of course, Plant hopes are the mind in the states to do the bidding of the Sultan of Sokoto, Abakir, and all the rest of them. It is not going to work. Let the world not say we did not warn them. Let nobody come back and say that we are.